Folks, it's Brian, and I'm going to be... Can I be real with you for a second? This is a really fun episode. You're going to really like it. We have a great guest, Biniam Bazuna, who's an old friend of mine, been in a bunch of NSP videos, and is a super talented uh, comedian and writer. And if you want to see our faces and his, um, you can go to patreon.com slash late night and sign up at any tier to get a video version of the episode. Also, if you sign up at $5 a month or more, uh, you can get mini episodes every week. And trust me, that's where the real fun stuff happens. Anyway, enjoy this wonderful episode with the amazing Biniam Bazuna. Am I the first? Am I the first guest to ever put in contacts on the air? Yeah, it's like that yes. time Mark Marin had someone pump breast milk. Oh, it's amazing! This is like uh, when uh, Courtney Love showed her boobs to Letterman. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> all time. Do you remember that? All time talk show moment. I do remember that. Yes. Yeah, big big deal. Back when people used to watch stuff live on television. I know. Remember TV? Oh, like, we you did might it. Be too young. We did it. Dude, it's you're happening. so smooth with those. As like a somebody who stopped wearing contacts because I couldn't stand the process. I Top mean, I, I stopped wearing them as much just because I was like, ugh, sometimes it makes my eyes scratchy and I forget to take them out. But I still pop them in when I want to, you know, be like, I don't need glasses or I'm yeah. going to like <laughs> go on a run or play basketball or something where you don't want to have metal attached to your forehead, you know? Yeah. Well, the thing is, yeah. you look great either way. So yeah. it's wow. like, thank you so you know, much. Either way, well, I just so it's a winning <laughs> proposition. Well, you took your glasses off too late, and so I'm just trying to match the vibes. I did because I just discovered that there's a new feature on this that adds a, be- a beauty filter <laughs> on uh, your video, <laughs> and I'm I'm giving it a shot because I don't want You're the like... glasses to interrupt. Because my glasses prescription is so horrifically out of date. So I put them on and I'm like, this still is uh, not <laughs> quite what I need. This isn't really helping. Um, yeah, yeah, but so they we're... make you look smarter. So, <laughs> you know, they at least make you look like um, stylish. That's kind of like my glasses are the real circular Harry Potter ish yeah. looking ones. And yeah, these have yeah. become like, so trendy with like film bro type people where it's almost very much you know yeah (laughs) it's like that that guy is gonna offer you yellow american spirits and tell you what a tarkovsky (laughs) movie is yes yes i I think it's interesting that those are now harry potter glasses whereas when i was a a kid they were john lennon glasses of course right you know, who was the round glasses guy before Harry Potter. And, you know, honestly, you could say very similar people. John Lennon, Harry that, Potter. That's right. Lot, lot, <laughs> they have a lot in common. You know, well, I, they're, they're, they both were into Asian women, you know? That's, that's right. Something that, uh... I was, I was going to say, actually, I've been a, a big J.K. Rowling fan for years. And I actually I just recently found out she's an author. Uh, as well. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I was like, I just like her for her work. I just like her for her tweets, honestly. And I was yeah, like, what? I just was following her online. I was books? like, these are good opinions. <laughs> wow, I should read some of her other work. But then it's all like this fantasy stuff. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm about the real, I'm about the real world, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, her non-authorial work is truly fantastic um, in, a, in a fantasy <laughs> well, sense. Just do you, truly, do you know like, that... what reality are we talking about here? <laughs> Another fantasy. Isn't it crazy um, that she did you know that she writes uh, novels that are like crime things under a dude's name? I did. Yes. Hear, I can't remember the names. What's the name? Do you guys remember? I the can't name? remember the name, but I seem to recall that the name has something to do with like a prominent anti-trans activist or really? researcher. Yeah, it's like. Hold on, uh, Robert Galbraith. <laughs> Robert Galbraith. That's what it Robert is. Robert Galbraith. Just... Yeah. Yeah, huh. I, f- I feel like I need to fact check what I said, but she never fact checks anything. So. Oh no I... no actually it's it's is this worse? Uh. Quote, because it's one of my favorite men's names and because Robert F. Kennedy is my hero. So, you know, it, well, I, did, I did just Bobby. Yeah. Bobby Kennedy is her guy. 
Uh, yeah. I did just. Have you guys ever seen JFK the movie? The the, the a Walter long Stone time one? ago. You know, twenty years ago. No. Okay. I just rewatched it. It still holds up, and it made me do a lot of research on Sirhan Sirhan and uh, oh yeah, you know Jack Ru- Jack Ruby. These are all the people who killed Kennedys and killed Lee Oswald and all this stuff. And that movie, you watch it and you go like. This I, I I'm a believer, and also this is probably where QAnon came from. <laughs> you know? Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember. And it's a huge. Yeah. It's a huge. I'll, I'll just say this one other thing about it. It's a huge movie with A-list stars. It's yep. like Joe Pesci and Costner, fucking Costner, and all these people, and it is positing a conspiracy theory, which seems true, that is like was a huge like Oscar winning movie. And that would kind of be like if a 9-11 truth movie came out now starring like Timothy yes. Chalamet and Brad Pitt, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's like, I'm like, how does this yeah. movie exist? That movie, okay, that movie is called Ground Zero, right? Yes. That's the name, that's the name of the movie. And it is about the forming of the, the plot to, yes. you know, to do 9-11. But it's all like, yeah, yeah, it's the conspiracy theory. That's right. Who are we casting and, as B- Bush in this situation? Oh, I mean, well, Brolin already did it, right? He Wasn't he Brolin in yeah. the other Oliver Stone? That's a, that's another yeah. Oliver Stone, right? The W movie? He, yeah. And the W, which that movie kind of disappeared from time. I feel like people forgot that I movie haven't exists. thought about it in years. And it was... Uh, that, fuck, who was, was Richard Dreyfus as Dick Cheney? Is that right? I, that sounds was right. I, I honestly haven't seen it. Um, I might be making that up. Yeah. I think W now would probably be like did you see the trailer for the sebastian stan movie where he's playing trump no i haven't seen the trailer but i've seen all a million reddit posts about is that it. the apprentice the the one that's coming yes. out like okay that one okay and i, I feel that. like he could play george w bush as well he just can mm. kind of like morph himself he, as long as he does a little accent or yep. if we're going for like someone that's has a little bit of a southern vibe to them uh, we get somebody from Yellowstone. Have you guys ever seen Yellowstone? I actually haven't. No. I know it's like the most popular show I've never seen a single episode of. <laughs> so I know a guy from it. I've 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 watched the pilot, but that it just seemed like there's too many episodes. I was just like, oh, it's too much. But I know 100% a guy named Jimmy. Why I haven't watched it? Yeah, there's a guy named Jimmy in the show, played by a guy I know who I think could also play Bush, and he's got the accent mm-hmm. down. Okay. Um, okay. I know this is what you guys Great. wanted to talk Jimmy about, right? from Yellowstone. Got it. Yeah, <laughs> what that's about, right. I do, honestly, what, I do love dream casting uh, movies that we're coming up with. I think this is a very good use of all of our time. Okay, okay. What, about Bo- what, what about Bob Odenkirk? Odenkirk. Oh, oh, w? He, oh, that's really good. That's really good. I think... Like, physically, I don't think it would be a match, but I think he could do it. And mainly because I, I, think... I want to see it. And then at a certain point in the movie, he he do, he goes, "My Little Women," and then the movie is well, what, immediately what we five do out of then five for is me. we stunt cast. It's Odin Kirk as W, and then Brian Cranston as Dick Cheney, right? Ooh, so you're kind of you reversing, Dick Cheney. right? In the yeah. okay. who, who played who played Dick Cheney in the movie The Cheney or Vice? Was that a? It oh, was maybe, somebody crazy. Uh, yeah, who was that? I that was all, another up. Oliver Stone movie. <laughs> was it? The, He's like obsessed I mean, with the exactly Bush president no, that, kind of thing. That was the um uh Ad- Adam. Oh, Adam McKay. McKay. Was Adam McKay. I, it uh, was someone where you're like, oh my, oh, it was Christian Bale. Christian Bale played Christian Shane. Bale. Yeah. Whoa, I forgot that. Yeah, yeah. it's a whole thing. And he did, and he was doing the voice too. He was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't it crazy <laughs> that that guy was a fucking child actor, Christian Bale? Like, started oh out God. as a kid. And was in, is it Empire of the Sun? I think it was like his movie as like a little kid, which they made us watch in summer camp. I remember this very I clearly. never, I uh, never saw that movie, but I know it exists. And yeah, like yeah. him, same with, I guess like Leonardo DiCaprio was on Growing Pains as yep. a kid. Yeah, yeah. These people. It's fascinating to watch early. these, these like trajectories into like successful adult actors, Kenan Thompson, right? Who is not a dramatic actor, but has been acting since he was, zero as far as i can tell like has been on screen I mean, his entire is, life is this movie his opportunity to play colin powell are you gonna oh, put him dude. in there 
One hundred percent, it is. One hundred percent, it is. I like that. It it does seem like it. It's time for him to do a. I mean, maybe the guy has, and I just don't know. For time for him to do a dramatic thing, like so many comedians do, I, right? Yeah, I don't think he has, and I think he could. I think if like, because I've heard him on enough podcasts where he's like not doing his like kind of SNL type thing, yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. just talking like a guy. I'm like, oh, if you put you in something and you were just talking like this, like no shtick. I would believe he's just yeah. a guy going through whatever, you know? Right. And he's lived his whole life in front of a camera. He's totally cool with it. He just, you know, he's he's a natural actor. I bet he could I bet he could do it in a heartbeat. I, I you love know, this. I have a, Colin where's Keenan Thompson's Barry? Let's go. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Keenan Thompson being a serial killer slash actor. What would be his version? He's like a, it's like a Mr. Oh, actually, Brooks type thing. Okay, so I actually have a movie idea for Keenan. I'm gonna reveal it yes. here. It's something Do I've it. thought of in the past, but like I never wrote it, so I'm like, whatever. Um, okay, so on TikTok, this is something I found maybe three, four years ago. There's this guy named Korean Dad. That's his handle. Okay, and what he does like is guy. he will speak straight to camera, and he will act as if the camera is his kid. So they'll like, I have seen go, this guy. Yes. Yes. I know who you're talking yes. About. Yes. They'll go to like the Asian supermarket, like H Mart. And then he'll be yes. like, Hey, yes. should we get some of these? Or like, do you want, <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing? Or he's like, Hey, right. good job on your homework or whatever. And then there'll be people who duet these videos, bawling, uh -huh. crying, like, <laughs> cause they didn't have a Korean dad in their life. And then right. I've even seen yeah. black people like bawling, crying at this guy too. Cause they're just like, even though he's Korean, he's still a dad figure. Like and a, I didn't yeah, have a dad figure. Yeah. And I was like, this is first of all, people filming themselves crying, always fascinating. I'm like, wow, what is this world we live in? And then, yeah. uh, like people, yeah. Being able to believe it was cause you're like, you're pressing record. So this obviously the there's, yeah, it's, there was it's prep strange. involved, right? You, you yeah. set up your ring light for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're like, yes. okay, uh, it'll get this going. Let me do it the video. Let me press record. Okay, now cry. Well, uh, you know. Can, well, it's sorry. Little... I, want, I want to talk about something, but I want to get to this movie pitch first. Oh, okay. I'll Please. say the movie pitch, and then he says, so uh, I was like, this is so interesting. How funny would it be if there was a movie where there was a guy who had like, let's say he has a restaurant. This is Keenan character. Okay. He... Uh, it's like not doing well. A young employee of his shows him Korean dad on TikTok. And he's like, man, this guy's got like 300,000, 400,000 followers. All he does is he like pretends to be a dad. And maybe you could do that for this business. You could be like, you know, black dad, you know, Korean yeah. black barbecue restaurant dad, dad, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Black restaurant dad. And uh, he's like, okay. So he starts making these videos where he's like, hey, you know, just making the burgers. Do you want to try some? Or like, Hey, mm -hmm. uh, I made dinner for you. How you doing? And it doesn't really take off, but there is like one guy who keeps messaging him. Uh, mm -hmm. And then that guy starts like, some guy starts showing up at the restaurant, starts stalking him, is like, I am your son. You are my, and it becomes a very like stalker, nightcrawler thing of like a young black man who is uh, coming after Keenan. And he's like, mm -hmm. I'm not your dad. It's just a TikTok. And that's, you know, <laughs> That's the movie. Wow. That movie well, okay, is called, hold on. The movie is called Parasocial. Parasocial. Ooh. That's how about movie. Parent Social. Parent Ooh. Social. That, even better. <laughs> That's it. We did. I wrote that down. That's how yep. good it is. It Parent Social, one word. I love that. It's sort of like the uh, John Travolta, uh, Fred Durst, uh, The Fanatic. Did you guys see The Fanatic? No, Ooh, no, I need to see it. Oh, My not, two favorite rough. people, please continue. Yeah, no, it's, I'm gonna it's write wild. Down. There's a really good uh, Red Letter Media video on The Fanatic, but it, it is uh, a wild movie. It made me think of, have you guys seen the Patton Oswalt um, movie, Big Fan? Yes. No. Yes. That's, it's, it's about him being obsessed with some like NFL player, and he's like basically stalking like, them, but he's... He unaware. calls into like a sports talk show mm -hmm. constantly, right? And yes. yeah, I, I thought, I, I mean, I remember I saw it 10 years ago or 15, whatever, whenever it came out. It's it's not that recent, but I remember I've been a Patton fan for years and I was like, oh my God, a Patton Oswalt movie where he's like the lead. Uh, I remember really enjoying it. What, Ratatouille wasn't enough for you? It was not enough for me, no. <laughs> I feel like 
Was that his first dramatic thing, or had he done stuff like that before? There was sure. Young Adult also. And Ooh, I think yes. Young Adult was before Big Fan, but I could be wrong. Is that the Diablo Cody one? Yes. Yes. I is. forgot yeah, that he was uh, in that. And Charlize Theron, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Looking mm-hmm. very hot in that movie. Mm-hmm. I was like, you I know, do not believe that you don't have your life together. You're too hot <laughs> to not have your life yeah. together. Come on. <laughs> Absolutely. The thing, so, okay, the thing I wanted to talk about uh before is uh which the the keenan idea which i I think is a great idea uh reminded me of is reaction videos and because the idea of like i'm prepping this thing and i'm gonna react to it real time um is such an odd genre to me because i it, it it's exactly this illusion of is this person watching it or experiencing it for the first time or not or how much how many retakes are they doing you know yes. are they and i see that because i see a lot of react to nsp you know things recommended to me in the algorithm and it's i i don't know how ser- you know hey it's not a genre i generally watch but exactly this question of is this real is this the first time they're seeing it what is going on with these is fascinating to me so i'm curious I... are you do, do you watch reaction videos I mean, you can't help but see them because oftentimes that's how you discover the content that they are reacting to. You see it first in a reaction video because, and then I'm always like the person who made the original content must be like, well, I mean, you're just kind of showing my thing. So yeah, I guess you're changing it a little bit. There's this one guy who is the, uh, the king of this stuff. Uh, I, I, do you ever watch this animator named meat Canyon? That sounds familiar. He, the name I, does sound I, familiar. I, I so can't he put a is. Face to it, yeah. He, ba- remember back at, back at Maker, Vernon used to represent. Vernon is a guy that me and Layton mutually know. Um, he used to represent all these animators on YouTube, and yeah. uh, I don't really follow that world anymore. But this guy somehow popped up, and he makes all of these pop culture, like, animated things that are super dark, and they are like. Mm-hmm taking something that we all re- realize from YouTube and then making it into almost like a horror movie. And there's this one guy who's like, uh, he's some type of Eastern European and he watches these videos and he's always like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, and you don't even know what he's saying really. And he makes himself really small in the corner. So it's like barely changing the original thing. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, <laughs> he made a video about this guy. That's amazing. Uh, but I- I've seen these ones where they are just trying to, effectively minimize their footprint so that the person is just really watching the original video. Mm -hmm. They make themselves on a green screen. They make themselves transparent. They're about as big as my fist is right here. You know, see, that's the, that's the opposite of the ones that I have seen reacting to NSP where it's the NSP video is real small in the corner and their faces are like huge, like taking up the entire screen. with like At least, yeah, at least in that sense, and that means you got good fans. Uh, yeah. At least oh, in that great, sense, yeah. they are like, this is about me reacting to this thing instead of trying to trick you into watching something right. and I get the views instead of the original thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, My favorite always, is when they yeah. say nothing. So it's like, <laughs> if, if okay, if you roast me for the thing that I'm about to hold up, I deserve it. But let's say this is the video and it's in the background uh-huh. and the person's just like, mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the that's the extent <laughs> that's the extent of the reaction that they're doing. I mean, uh, yeah. hey, how maybe, do you sl- how that, do you sleep at night? <laughs> and that's the that's the extent of the reaction to. Okay, I'll do you even one better. I was in a podcast clip that went viral where I was saying that uh, marriages should be done like MBA contracts, like where uh, it's like, okay, we got a we got a four year deal. Uh, let's, let's, you know, check in, then we'll decide if we want to renew and maybe it makes you try a little bit harder because you know that your contract's coming up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this, this is a clip. This clip goes big on Instagram and it has a lot of comments on it of people making jokes where they're like, oh man, are we allowed to do trade clauses and all this kind of stuff you know, making funny comments. There's a guy who screen records me saying this on a podcast and then he scrolls down to the comments and you read through the comments and then that's the video 
and he didn't tag me or any of the other people in it. So it's like he's getting the content and then he's getting the people commenting on the content and then that's his content. It's just like five things it's, removed. <laughs> I was thinking recently about someone, I can't, probably a lot of people have done this, but I remember, I don't know, 10 ish years ago, someone did an art exhibition, which they just printed out other people's Instagram posts, like with their names mm-hmm. and everything and just put them up. Yeah. Right. He had this whole attribution, <sighs> like stealing content kind of thing. And it's, we got to wonder yeah, like bugs me. if Andy, if Andy Warhol was around today, would he be like, yep, that's that's what this is it. I think so. You know? Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The reaction thing, when I, I see NSP reaction, almost everybody I've seen react to NSP, they get, I don't know, 10 seconds in, and then they all do the same thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that's going to be everybody. like the blurb on the album. Like, Pitchfork yeah. says, okay. Here, okay. Here's... Here's what I can say. If you know how there's these these huge streamers who do a lot of React content, guys like yep. Kai Sinat, Speed, uh, mm-hmm. at least these guys are like jumping around and screaming and burning calories and getting sweaty and being crazy. I'm like, at least yeah. you're working. You're creating a new thing because yeah. you're like doing so much. But if all you're doing is kind of like what you and Layton were saying, we're just like, hmm. You know, that's like, <laughs> that's not really anything. Someone must you know? have done this where, I mean, it's sort of like the the comment thing where it's, you know, that someone who reacts to reaction videos and then a person who reacts to the reaction to the reaction oh, video. And then you just keep uh, iterating and it keep, like, it's, keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Didn't uh, Jack Spones, I think, that was Bo Burnham. Okay, got it. He did it. I'm yeah. sure someone else has done it too, but Bo did it in his special Inside where- He did it in that, okay. He, Yeah, it was like some sort of like doing an apology, but then he started reacting to his apology, and then he started reacting to the reaction of his apology. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Yeah. I Uh, still, and and this probably makes me a bad comedy musician. I have not seen Inside. Neither have I. Even though I like it, I get it. And I think it's sometimes things get to this point where they're so widely beloved that Mm -hmm. I feel like I can't watch them. Or you know. widely beloathed, as seems to be a big contingent, especially in the years since it has come out. Um, mm-hmm. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't either. It was people... a big backlash. Oh, it's the typical, I like... Mean, not shocking, pr- I guess. Rich but... male, white privilege, how, to, to complaining about how terrible his life is. Which, mm-hmm. you know, like, valid, but whatever. I, 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 I mean, think it's funny. I think it was it, like the coolest thing about it is like he did it all by himself, setting up the lights and whatever, which is just like a crazy, meticulous work of, you know, uh, compulsion and like uh, he's your obsession. Like, like I'm just like, wow, that is just impressive to have that much focus to do that yes. over yeah. a year, you know? 100%. Uh, but it's all, it, it also smacks of just like, if you don't like the guy, just say that you don't like him. We don't need yeah. to come up with the whole thing. Just say you don't like him or think he's funny or that you think he's annoying. Like we don't we don't Do have you to make ever, it a whole thing. I also I just I, I'm I have a hard time believing takes on the internet because every mm-hmm. take is compromised by the fact that they know that if they do a spicy take, that will get engagement, which drives the algorithm which will then contribute right. to them getting followers. So I'm just kind of like, do you really even mean this? And maybe you think you mean it, but you've been poisoned by this. You've been internet right. yeah. brain. Well, the you moment know? it becomes a public facing thing, it's poisoned, right? I have this of what it is. Yeah. Exact thing last night where Jory sent me a link to- uh, Jory is a was... mutual friend of ours. So oh, okay, for, yeah. For context, yeah. You can, t- Jory is a secret. You, you, okay, yes, I, <laughs> don't, don't contact him. Our friends a but, secret. Yeah. Rolling Stone put out a the 100 best TV episodes of all time list, uh-huh. and yeah. I had to, I was immediately I was like, well, I gotta get I gotta go see what that top ten is, and I had to scroll for so long, multiple loading pages. The punchline of number one made me cackle so fucking hard. Wait, okay, can okay. we guess it? 
can do you want to guess, guess it? In, in, in terms of what would make me scream laughing i don't know what the punchline was but i can guess that maybe it's either like seinfeld or breaking bad or something or like what would be the best uh, episode mash of, finale uh, the se- the mash series finale maybe people talk about that mm, a lot or or what if it's uh there's no way something this new would be it but or, or it could be okay it's either the the episode of Seinfeld where they all have to not masturbate or something that maybe mm-hmm. the, or the uh, con- contest the contest I contest the contest yep. or uh, and I don't think it would be this but I know this is on the list that episode of the bear that's all one shot where it's like you know uh-huh. the, the uh-huh. episode yeah. six of season one or something I yep. don't know though those the, it, Benny, or maybe I mean, you were Valley. you were closest at the beginning it's the Ozymandias episode of Breaking Bad is number one. Ooh, okay. Is so, it is Ozzy, which is the Ozymandias episode? It's That's the one where, where all the shit hits the fan at the end. Where they're in the where... desert and he kills them, mm, right? That that stuff. Yes, is that Ozymandias? Yeah. Yes, it's the it one is. where he finds out he finds out Hank died on the phone. Yes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it's yeah, yeah. it's okay. it's the whole thing of Hank, Hank died. Spoilers for Breaking Bad. If you're listening to the okay. show and I somehow have I feel like I should spoiled. set my mic up like how you guys have it but I'm also scared of fucking up the mic. I think it's where, I, it's where it is. Look, yeah. we've gotten comments okay. when people have been like, really bothers me how the girl isn't even talking into the microphone correctly. Okay. What? Wow, that just sounds I'm try- like... I'm, try- I'm, trying to, I'm trying to point to Brian's <laughs> mic, which is in the exact same configuration. Well, I really but... want a hand to come in from this side. Uh, can't do it. That's oh my God, if we way. could pull off that, that gag, can thing. we get like <laughs> fake hands that we can control? That would be yes. Great. Anyway. But I, you know, I love Breaking Bad. I've rewatched it an unhealthy, disgusting amount of times. Um, but that being the number one is so funny to me. <laughs> anyway, but but going through the top ten of that list, like number three is an episode of The Leftovers. There's an ER mm. episode in the top this twenty. An ER episode? Mm. Yeah. Wow. But in reading it, it was like, well, I can't take this seriously. I know this is rage bait. Like, yeah. The, That's right. Number two had the decency to be Simpsons' last exit to Springfield, which is a real basic bitch pick, but it it's deserves that spot in one. terms of like, what is television? That is kind of it, but. You know, I mean, they yeah, they definitely want to do spicy takes that will make people be like, what the hell? You know, and they'll share it with that. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's the, yeah. and, and I almost feel, Tell me how you guys feel like like what you said, Brian, I think is so true of like as soon as it's public, it's compromised, it's poisoned. So then when you see altruism on the Internet, like let's say something terrible is happening in the world and I post about it. Is that good? Is that bad? Is that anything? Is it is it good and compromised? You know, and I, I must I- prove I am a good person i I think that is that's exactly the right way to say it it is good and compromised because there is always an element of it yeah i I think a lot about prince when i think about this stuff like apparently prince uh as a jehovah's witness you know was just doing all this like charitable stuff in the background didn't tell anybody about it while he was alive he's just doing all this good and just taking no credit for it and it's not a public thing he doesn't want recognition he's just doing it then he dies and it comes out he's been doing this incredible charitable work his whole life that's the pure version right is Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're just doing good shit and you're not telling anybody about it you're just doing it well there it is you're not trading it for it's it's that it's that little question when you do a gofundme show my name or not you know yep and you have to decide right then to be prince or not and i've done both (laughs) you know (laughs) i've done both yeah part there's a part of me that's like yeah i I want them to know i'm helping there have been other ones where it's just like i don't even know this person whatever no, totally. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah, I think there's, about this a lot. Yeah. There's this intersection. It's funny because of what my lemon was going to be, which we might do not do segments this episode just because we're on a mild time crunch. But like this uh, reaction video plus is this a genuine expression or is this uh, completely compromised comes together into what my lemon was going to be, which is the cottage industry of like, commentary channels that are almost exclusively like gossip rags or somebody's Ooh, whole my, bit like, 
yeah is like the downfall of so and so and then it's just <sighs> somebody being like so excited so like here's every single thing that they've done wrong and then they'll the list they'll be like they were racist one time and one time they uh sent out an or an order product that like some people didn't get it delivered d delivered <laughs> also they killed a man also <laughs> they got sponsored by better help like also the whole thing they were <laughs> they were friends with this guy who was friends with the guy who got essay <laughs> sexual assault charges and then you're like okay i don't know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and I so love it's the, that the, but the that catching person... strays because you were friends yeah. with somebody what it's like, like what okay. they were yeah. also they following a fire thing, emblem yeah, <laughs> yeah right yeah. <laughs> also fire follow an account that posts fire emblem fan art of dubiously aged characters and also committed uh, a murder. Like the way that it's really serious accusations peppered in with a bunch of little things. But the thing that always gets me is it's always this person where it's like your entire channel that has millions of views that you make so much money off of is solely you banking on how much better, like the implicit thing is I'm better than these people. 100%. But it's like, you're just a fucking gossip. Like that's, you're a vulture. Especially okay. if you're pointing at somebody who has, as you're proclaiming, like actual victims, you're just giddily like, okay, besties, here's the tea. Like, here, I, here's I, what I why wonder. would anybody want to be in the same room with you? Like, why would anyone talk to you as a person if this is just how you fundamentally are? Sorry, is that part of your rant or are you just asking me? Well, Brian, you need to answer for your crimes. Yeah. Yeah. Please, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think. Here's what I wonder about those people, because there's the kind you're saying where it's like this weird documentary style thing and you never see their face. And so you're kind of like you're also faceless, too. So you could just be like some third grade teacher who's like right. doing this on the side. Uh, and then there's the people like Keemstar. What ha now what H3H3 does? That's basically the mm -hmm. same thing. Are they the same thing to you, Leighton, or is that a different kind of thing? Yeah, I'm actually more so talking about that second group of people where they really center okay. themselves. I can't think of the names off at the top of my head of some of these channels, but it ju it just even if the person is like a real reprehensible piece of shit that they're talking about, I fundamentally do not trust you as a creator if the mm -hmm. only thing that you contribute as creative output on this planet is making that type of video. Well, I how do you sleep at night? That, that's How? exactly what I was about to say is I feel like if, you know, I, I don't want to denigrate anyone's work, but that's such creative garbage, right? Yeah. Like do something. If you if you can uh, muster that kind of support and fandom, do something fucking cool with it. Like take a take a I, chance, create create something interesting, not just. I mean, that's stuff. why like the, the guy I mentioned before, Meat Canyon, who makes fun of a lot of YouTube people. He, you know, you, you could look at his channel and say this is negative, but what you can't say is he is making amazing satire and it may be your vibe or may not be your vibe, but he's creating right. something. Right. Yeah. He's creating, a, a, he has an artistic point of view that yes. he's commenting on. Well, and, uh, and a lot of, a lot of those big channels too, right? And this is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's, I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's the staffs of writers and everyone collecting, collecting this dirt. So it's important to view it through that lens as well, right? This is something a team has come up with to uh, This is an industry. This. Or yeah. it's one person and then they went to the specific snark sub for this person and then cold the, the, all of the obsessive stalkery work of a bunch of weirdos who are obsessed with this person. Right. I um, mean, at this point, maybe they're just going on ChatGPT4 and they're just like, <laughs> what did you know logan paul do this week and i like, okay yeah. thanks jet gpt4 uh i was also wondering about this where okay so this is a whole thing that i don't even know if you guys know about because this is like deep stand-up podcaster territory you know how there's uh -huh. like a whole segment of like it's like joe rogan theo vaughn andrew schultz like this is like a whole sphere of yeah. stand-up yeah. that is related or podcaster that's related to stand-up there is a whole industry of people who like make it their thing to hate on these people. So they'll make sure. these things like the downfall of Burt Kreischer or like, does Joe <laughs> Rogan even understand jokes? And they like, <laughs> they make yeah. like a mini documentary 
And these things are are very popular. And the and the people yeah. that they're even commenting on sometimes seem to be niche figures sometimes. And like I'm just so like I, I'm I'm part of me is like wow, there's so much work that you've done. Like the hate. The, the research that you have to do to hate like this shows a deep level of obsession too. Yes, you know, like 100%. you obviously it's, it's fandom. It. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's a very. I think about this so frequently because I'm fascinated by this type of person and similarly yeah. like snark groups and the gender divide between like a snark group and a hate group. Two different things. I, okay. I won't name a, a particular website here, but you know, the doxing central of the internet you feel the gender divide really strongly and the type of rhetoric that they use versus something like, you know, snark subs for fundamentalist families or makeup influencers on Reddit. Like there's a very wow. different, and it's these people who are like, I fucking hate this person. This is a horrible person. But on the like snark side, it's usually woke lefty women who have found a loophole where they get to be misogynistic, fat phobic, classist as fuck under the veil of I'm doing the right thing. And it's like, this is bullying. Yes. You're doing stalking and bullying and you have found a way to feel good about yourself. And you're in so deep that this is a hobby to you. This is a community to you. You are a bigger fan of these people than people who genuinely like them. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I find that very interesting because i do believe that every human has a deep innate need for recreational hatred some people you know get more intense about it than others <laughs> they're almost like uh like let's say you work for a news outlet like the washington post and you are assigned to be like the white house press secretary to cover joe biden yeah. depending on the political leaning of the organization you work for you are a little bit of a gossip columnist for the president, right? Oh, You're like, sure. let's see of what course. he did today, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, Walking around the, 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 the WAPO TMZ office with a big iced coffee, <laughs> like, hey, what's going on? Was, was there a nip slip today? I heard I heard whisperings of XYZ, you know? It's it's what, like what? it's like a high a higher version of gossip columnist, you know? More, I was yeah. trying, what's what's the movie that has Will Arnett and Eric Andre doing that TMZ? Oh, and Mike yes, yes. Uh, is, is okay, it, it's very. If, it's at the very is, end of the movie. It, uh, it, it's fuck. like a, it's a slight Chelsea Peretti's in there too. It's a slight runner. Oh, is it? Is it um, I, is oh, it, I, I love. I love you, man. No, I. It maybe is. Did you ever see that Seth Rogen movie about him being with Charlize Theron and Charlize Theron is running for president? Or she's like vice president no. or something. No, I don't oh, wait, think it's okay. that one though, because I've definitely seen it and I've seen it a couple times. The, the long is shot. what you're talking really about stop. in Pop Star Never Stop Never Stop. That's yes, exactly that's what, what I'm is. talking that's what about. Is. That's yes, what it is. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Honestly, Sorry, I, I, I like that movie a lot, and it is funny. I Those too. scenes are the funniest to me for some reason. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but something about them laughing and having the huge. And they're like falling over with the coffee. Yes. And that it's like all these like really great comics in that one yeah. scene. I really, yeah. Who's yeah, the, I is Will Arnett? Will Arnett's the one playing the guy doing the. Right? Yes. Yeah. 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 And then I think in the front, I remember it's Eric Andre and Chelsea Peretti and then Mike Birbiglia in the front. And I think Mike Birbiglia is wearing a, 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 a wig, like a blonde wig yeah. too. I could be and, wrong about and, that. And Eric Andre has like big dreadlocks, I think. Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it Binium, is I was so interrupting old. you when you were talking about the other thing that isn't pop star. Oh, it was just the it's, Seth Rogen I was thinking, one. It's called long, the long shot, and I think it was like mm. it's oh, yeah. like a double entendre because she's a long shot to win, but it's also like why would this established Charlize Theron woman running for president or whatever date this guy like Seth Rogen who's like not anything. Um, yeah, mm. it's a it's a pretty good movie, but I think it also marked kind of like, oh, we're not going to do comedies in theaters unless it also is Jumanji. You know, like that was right. kind of <laughs> 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 yeah. that was like one of those where I was like, this kind of movie used to be huge, romantic comedy, two big stars, and then I think it just did fine. And then they were yeah. like, all yeah. right, we're doing TV now. Fuck That's right. movies. We're no more yeah. of this. I do want to yeah. before we go any further, I want to introduce the show because this is. Late Night with Brian Wecht. My name is Brian Wecht. Over here, across from me, we have Leighton Gray. 
Hi, I'm Leighton Gray. I'm peak uh, YouTube drama correspondent for this show. <laughs> Mystery guest, who are you? Well, I've been, I've been, it's just been a, a silhouette this whole time, right? I'm, That's I'm right. like yeah, a yeah. super special. <laughs> Your voice has been changed. <laughs> Face reveal now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is Biniam Bazuna. Um, I am a comedian and writer, and I've been in four or five ninja sex party videos <laughs> that's right uh, over, the, over the last 10 years or more maybe okay even. and okay so i was gonna tell this but i decided to save it for the pod so uh the reason so brian had asked me to be on the podcast a while ago and i think i was busy doing something that i forgot and then i got reminded I think it might of be on me again, too brian. i think i was supposed to follow up with you and i forgot so don't don't and then we uh, yeah it might be a bit or we, it we, just fell okay. off the map for whatever reason yeah it fell off the map. It was COVID times, you know. Yeah. Uh, but so recently someone was like, I, I've, I've been on a whole like uh, Instagram, TikTok kick of like going back and editing my old videos to make them vertical and doing releasing things. And someone was like, yeah. you know, YouTube shorts is like being really promoted right now. You should upload some stuff to shorts. So I took this, I made this Comedy Central digital series that's all vertical a while back. And I just put up one of the things on shorts because it's vertical and it was a series where i teach people in a scripted format but i make it look unscripted like it's just on some guy's instagram story that i am uh it's called how to be broke and it's, it's like, really good Here's... dude it's really oh, funny. thanks yeah. dude it's all these ways to save money but all of his advice is extremely unethical and he's like <laughs> but he's kind of like a sociopath and he's kind of like yeah you can just do this and the guy behind the camera this is my friend and he's kind of like the voice of reason like nigga don't do that what are you doing you know <laughs> and so in this one i'm teaching people how to get a free car and what i say is that if you call a locksmith to unlock your car they don't check to make sure it's your car before they unlock it for you which is mm. a real thing i have experienced several times i think some locksmiths check some in la are just like trying to get their hundred bucks get the money in there yeah, yeah yeah and so uh in this one, uh, we unlock this car and then we're like, oh, we don't have the keys. And then we're trying to hot wire it and it's not working. And then the owner of the car is walking up. And so we're like, oh shit, and we get in the back of the car and then we're being driven in the car and we go into this garage and you see these books and you see a Lamborghini. And then you see that it's that guy, Ty Lopez going, hey, if you wanna earn, you gotta learn first. And he's pointing at the books and this guy, yeah was like the major meme of like 2015, 2016. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. just through a yeah. random coincidence, I happened to get him the cameo in this video. So this video goes super viral on shorts. Now it has like maybe 3 million views. Those and the really? reason Fuck. why it goes, That's yeah, awesome. yeah. The reason it goes viral, these are the top two comments on it. They are, oh my God, is that Ty Lopez, the Lamborghini knowledge guy? And then <laughs> two is, oh shit, are they listening to NSP in the car? Because when I made that video, I asked Danny if I could use a song and he let me use Danny Don't You Know as what's being played on the radio in the car. And all these mm -hmm. people are such fans of you guys that that is like the second most commented thing. Like, that's awesome. oh shit, that's Danny Don't You Know. And I like was impressed. I was like, all these random people who are just coming across this video, no NSP. That's awesome. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And we, I mean, so you just for, you mentioned it before, but you, the reason we met is because you knew Danny from Maker. Yes. Right. Yes. When you worked there with uh -huh. him and Vernon and a bunch of other people who, uh, Aaron, Walg Aaron, uh, and Umatani, like, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Aaron Umatani, but also, did you know Aaron? Aaron Schmalfeld? The other Aaron, Aaron Schmalfeld. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, and we were just this pod of us four. It was like me, Danny, Vernon, Aaron Schmalfeld. Uh, and this was before Danny got Game Grumps. I remember all the drama happening. Yeah. I remember oh, yeah. John Tron leaving and then Danny getting this like call. And then it was like, at the time, I rem because I, I, I understood YouTube. I was like, dude, this is like you getting called to be the host of The Tonight Show, but for YouTube in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> I was like, this is a big deal. And I remember you know, you guys were making your NSP videos and you had your, your audience, you had maybe like 30,000, 40,000 subscribers. Yep, and I remember that, yep. seeing you guys like explode and yeah. going from now you're playing like the will turn and stuff. And it was so cool yeah, yeah, yeah. to see all that happen, you know? Yeah, no, yeah. it was great. I remember summer of 2013. I think it was June, 2013. Uh, How fast he, was it from that. 
like was it a direct like Danny gets on Game Grumps now Ninja Sex Party gets huge or did it take like how did it all was it completely well, it, related or was it kind of they were their separate things it was I mean definitely related you know I owe every the, the reason I am sitting in Los Angeles today is 100% because of Game Grumps I mean may, okay maybe 99.9 but yeah like if he hadn't joined, joined Game Grumps I, I can't imagine we would be a, a thing even still um, so it was like this we could see the views like you know, blow up the minute he did that. Mm -hmm. But what was weird about NSP is, so he joined, we put out our second album, March of that year of 2013. I just threw my pen across. Yeah. Um, and then he joined Grumps. And so for, there was a period, then we put out that first Starbomb album in 2013, yes. right in I December 2013. Uh, and then that was the first like, oh shit, this might like, actually be a thing yeah and and then had a second star bomb album the next year within a year yeah and so there was a period of time where we were like okay nsp is like kind of the passion project nobody really cares about it it's like you know you know it doesn't make money star bomb like people buy shit for and then during this this little uh period aaron offers me a job at game grumps i quit my professor job in england i move out here and so I remember this very clearly was I moved out, uh, we flew out with the, uh, you know, a one year old uh, uh, in J July 1st, 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and the third NSP album, Attitude City, came out two weeks later. And yes. it was the first. So I, I flew out. I'd given my notice uh basically at the at the university and they were like the moment you know you're not they gave me a year to like decide to come back or not if i wanted mm -hmm. you know like as a okay if this doesn't work out you can come back they're like but yeah. the moment you know for grant writing purposes just tell us and so i move out here two weeks later this third nsp album comes out and it's like on top of the comedy charts it's doing really well all this stuff and i was like oh, i remember shit. i feel like you guys like beat somebody create like you're in front of don glover or something or you're in front of like something Sun like, it was like something crazy where it was like whoa yeah i think there was a period where like us and bo burnham maybe what were like kind of flopping yeah. back and forth um, yes right i Which, i'm pretty sure that was it because in 2015 i, w I had, w had just graduated high school <laughs> <I> was really <laughs> that. yeah <laughs> um but that, then within a month within a month of that i wrote the university and i was like guys i'm not coming back like this is actually happening i'm out here for Dude, the long haul i thought that it was so cool because i i had so many conversations with danny about you know chasing after the dream and you know he been you guys have been doing the band for like four years right just yeah that's right four years yeah and and you know you were these music videos you guys were making were like very intensive there were like I don't know how you would oh, yeah. if you shot list them or whatever, but like I would watch oh, yeah. them and I'd be like, oh, this is very intricate. There is a lot yep. that went into this. And so to see, like to know that you guys were like, hey, we're just going to do this. And if it works, whatever. But if not, like we're still going to do it. And then it did work was so cool and very inspirational to me. I thought oh, it was thanks. So sick. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. always, you know, that was the mission statement from the start was like, write good music and, you know, our technical ability started out pretty minimal but then grew and make you know make well thought out Dude. videos and same thing like I our mean, technical ability grew as we went on but we were in it to do it and do a good job with it from from the beginning and there was definitely you know we were pretty deep in the red <laughs> for a long time i mean i know. mean i l like to me because you know on your first album or two i'm not sure was that two city third album third yeah third album you maybe maybe you had some serious songs on those ones or maybe it was but it seemed to in my recollection it was more jokes but then when i heard danny don't you know i was like oh this is just like an earnest banger and it was yeah. it's yeah, like yeah. that's still my favorite song because i was oh, like thanks. you don't even need to like know what nsp is or get the joke or anything to get this song it's just right. about being insecure and how like you will yeah. learn as you grow older and I, yeah, that song. Yeah, just and that one. Great. I mean, the the reason. Well, so we met our now producer and full songwriter, uh, songwriting collaborator Jim Roach, and he saw us exactly at that inflection point where it's like you guys have something, but you really don't know what you're doing, and mm -hmm. uh, which is was very true. It's like you know we could write funny songs, but from a like producing music perspective, 
I don't know that shit. And yeah. uh, and then he came in and we wrote once we started working with him, we wrote that one, too. And it was like getting that third guy in the mix who was like also really funny, also a great musician, yeah. also a great producer. Like that's what then it kind of clicked into <sighs> overdrive. What's and that's what what's the name really of the guy? He was like your Dan. Dan. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, is his name something Phil Spector? He was your Phil Spector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. I, I think of him as our Phil Spector, a really good guy, really talented, never done anything uncool. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's like right. just I, the great I, guy I, in all respect. Yeah, that's right. I got full. Jim would totally endorse. love it if you just start calling him Phil Spector all the great time. Great hair because, too. I keep drawing because it's thing. like. Yeah. That guy, he, I, if I'm remembering correctly, he invented all these production techniques, right? Like the wall, wall of sound, sound yeah. and wall of right. sound, all yeah. this stuff. And then he went on to do other works, which were not yes. so great. Less uh, good. But yeah, uh, but but well, yeah, again, they, I, I, I was a, a huge fan of his, and then I found out he's also a music producer. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, I never, I, I didn't really know too much about him until I watched that Beatles documentary. And then I went into Beatles like lore. And then I was like, oh, I, I think I kind of was like that. I think I knew him as a murderer. I didn't know right. that he was also, <laughs> <laughs> I first knew of him as like, oh, Phil Spector. That's that guy that was on trial for murder and stuff. Killed his well, wife. Well, because there's a famous and picture then, of him yeah. with the crazy hair and yeah. Cold, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, I guess oh, he did, you know. <laughs> Yeah. For people of Go a ahead. certain age, I guess it's similar with OJ of just like, yes, yeah, like I, I was about to people. <laughs> I did not even like it was like two things removed. Like I was like, oh, OJ's the murderer. And then I was like, oh, I guess he was a football player. And then I was like, oh, he was an actor, too. Like, I didn't know oh. that he even. <laughs> Dude, okay, my, my journey with OJ, because I'm not like a sports guy at all. To me, OJ was that guy from Police Squad and the Naked Gun. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And I knew he was like, uh, you know, a famous football player, but I didn't really, you know, I didn't know anything about it. And so when all that stuff went down, I still thought of him primarily as, oh, the guy from Naked Gun. Well, you know, I have to imagine that to a lot of people of a certain age, people like Dave Batista and The Rock are just actors and they didn't 100%. really know they were like wrestlers. John Cena. Or yep. anything. John That's Cena, right. too. Yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, I love that guy from Trainwreck or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Can I? Can yeah. I? Can I? Maybe an unpopular. I I think oh, Trainwreck is a good movie. I'm not like a I big like that movie. comedy person. I, I think Trainwreck is funny, I and agree it's with not you. not just because I'm incredibly thirsty for Bill Hader. Yeah, I mean, and a LeBron acting mm -hmm. debut, very good. And he's uh, good. I, yeah. yeah. And it ends in this classic comedy way that they kind of stopped doing, which is a dance number. Which yes. yeah. I was like, bring it back. We're not here for realism. Let it end with a yeah. dance yeah. number. That's a fun. We're here to feel good. You know? Yeah, totally. I went to see, uh, and I think I talked about this on the show, The they had the, a screening for the 50th anniversary of Blazing Saddles. Uh, wow. At the, where was it? Somewhere by the Staples Center, one of those venues over there. Mm -hmm. um, and again, ends with like, it sort of ends with a dance number, but then it kind of spills over into that whole like, you know, studio chase kind of yeah. fight scene. I, and it's like nobody ends things like this anymore. I like, feel like we got to bring back, thing. bring back the dance number. I feel like they should have ended like, I don't know, like whiplash with the dance number. Just bring everybody <laughs> on stage. <laughs> That's right. They're already on stage. So why not? Yeah, you know, just bring, yeah, go for <laughs> that last bloody. shot. Of the eyes, and they're all they all come dancing up. Paul Reiser comes dancing out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, movies improved by ending with a dance number. I will first nominate Seven. <laughs> Ooh, that would be great. He's got yes. the box dancing with it. Yeah, yes, and it's like a bunch right. of backup dancers like and doing then the head shit starts with singing the box. In the, box yeah. Yeah. the head in the box. He turns it. It's singing in there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay, you know what else would be improved by a dance number? I would love. To see, ooh, what if they did uh, w like Goodfellas and all the people who get <laughs> killed throughout the movie come back, come but they back. still have like wounds, like, yes. you know, and they're oh, dancing like as dead, dead mobsters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That'd be That's cool. That's really, really great. I mean, I, I would like take a, a Godfather lot. dance number. For ooh, sure. that'd be great. I, and, that, and then there's Godfather. like a horse. 
Godfather Three. Yeah, should have the horse is there. Mm. Yes, the horse, but yeah. it like has has it been bandaged up or stitched up? It's like a stitched yeah, up it's fine. horse. It's fine. Yeah, now. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, maybe they're holding Zodiac. the horse's head and singing. <laughs> <laughs> they, no, they've cool. got those like the toys for kids where it's like a horse head with a pole, and they're all like, <laughs> "Yeah, they're making it sing." Ooh, yeah. ooh, a horror movie dance number would be cool. Right, and all the all the corpses come out of the pool at the end. Yeah, right. Yeah, and they all kind of want you know they dance. And the little out. girl can like crawl out of the TV and break dance. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I have to say. <laughs> I just saw this and it kind of blew my mind. I saw it in a theater. Alien Romulus, amazing. Have you guys Is seen it? it? Really? I've not I seen it. I loved it. It's okay, the most cool. fun I've had at a movie theater in a really long time. It feels like it goes back to what you love about the original two of just like, we're on a ship. It's very desolate. Something fucked up has happened here. We don't know what exactly. And we're kind mm-hmm. of just investigating. It feels kind of like, the the horror video games that have become very popular are kind of that format too like we're in this place where something fucked up has happened i'm walking through it it's quiet it goes back to that with a very good like character story behind it and yeah. mm-hmm. just knocks it out of the part the guy the guy who directed it is this guy fetty alvarez who also yeah. did that movie don't breathe mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. yep which i love that movie too and he brings that same Me too like ability yeah do, did you see the sequel where the old guy is the good guy? <laughs> I never. I saw did not it, see. But... I did not see. Don't breathe too, because I was kind of like, what? It, there's another one. I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. really wrap my head around. It felt like uh, I like. I liked that one. You know. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like t- we're rooting for Turkey Baster Man. Okay, but no, I loved Don't Breathe. Did who did, did he direct Don't Breathe too? I'm looking right now. I don't know. Usually, I don't think there's any. I'd be surprised. No, it wasn't. I... It wasn't. He co-wrote okay. it, though. He co-wrote it, but he didn't direct it. Mm-hmm. This is a note that I wrote down like 40 minutes ago, and now I don't even remember what prompted me to write this down. But I'm curious about books and or movies that you saw as children, like in terms of this was assigned to you or you were like on a bus to a field trip and it was shown to you that are just like, why the fuck did they show us this? Um, okay. Um, if you can I, think of any. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah. This one wasn't shown to me by adults, but I was young. I think I was 11, and I went to my mom's best friend's house who lived in Minnesota, and she had a daughter who was like 13 or 14, and she was like, let's watch American Pie. So I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and this is before I know anything about sex, so I don't know what ejaculation is. I don't know. I don't know anything. This is before, like, so so I'm watching it, and there is that scene where, like, that movie would be, I, that would be a funny rewatch because I bet there's so much stuff in there where you're like, yo, this is basically rape or something. You know, there's probably uh-huh. a lot yeah, of stuff yeah. like that in that movie. For sure. Um, but this scene where Jason Biggs as Jim is on the bed. Jim Halpert, and yeah. And he has he has uh, the foreign exchange student Nadia, and they are secretly live streaming her and this sexual experience. Right. Yes. She she comes over to the bed and she's reaching for his crotch area, and he is like going up. Oh, oh, and I didn't know what that was supposed to mean, <laughs> so I was looking over at my mom's friend. I was like, Does he have to pee? Like, why is he doing that? <laughs> And she was just laughing and she didn't explain. And then I just, that is burned in my memory. Cause like later I saw, uh, like not too long after I saw uh, something about Mary. And there's that scene where before mm-hmm. the date, he, yep. he jacks off, but he gets some of it in his hair and then it makes his hair yep. like this. Or yeah, no, he puts yeah, it in yeah, her yeah. hair. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, it's like hanging on him. And like, I was just like, first of all, the consistency of that is wild. I don't know who's, <laughs> yeah. it was like Tracks frosting. for me. I, I mean, it seemed I was, like, <laughs> I was like, this, this is a D, de- Ben Stiller was dehydrated in that movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but then I remember telling friends at school in like fifth, sixth grade, cause I saw that movie. We were talking about like jacking off. And then I was like, well, it's something you do before a date. 
I remember telling them that <laughs> as, <laughs> as if I understood because I saw that yeah. movie. <laughs> Pro tip. And they were all like, they were all like, cool, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> I remember, so the, uh, I mean, to, to remember, it's not quite being shown something. I think I've talked about this on the show. In fact, I'm sure I have. Uh, my parents took me and my sister, my sister is two years younger, when I was 11 mm-hmm. and she was nine, George Carlin live. A live <laughs> George Carlin show. Because they knew I liked comedy and stand up, and George Carlin was funny. It explains so much about you, right? Yeah. yeah. This was How my, old were you? My, I was 11. You're 11. So, okay. kind of the same age you're talking about here. Yeah. Uh, and it was a live show at a local community college, and he was just doing a tour, and he was coming through North Jersey. And in retrospect, I mean, I just remember seeing the show and thinking, that's really funny. Also, I don't understand most of it. Uh, and talking to my parents years later, they were like, yeah, that I don't think that was the best choice as a parent. But also, but they would do this. They, My dad picked me up early from school when I was nine to go see Beverly Hills Cop, like pulled me oh, out cool. of school early just because he's like, this movie looks really funny. We got to go see it. Oh. And yeah, right. Yeah. So they I don't say didn't that. That really just has like action. It's not really that bad there's like a strip club scene no it's really not that bad and it's like and you know i actually just rewatched it because i i watched all well i didn't watch three but i watched the first two and the new one of beverly yeah yeah. uh Uh that movie's still fucking great it's like yeah it holds up he's never he's never better than in that movie it is the best like prime time eddie murphy okay my argument and this may be because i'm biased because i had this on vhs is that Eddie Murphy's resurgence with Nutty Professor One yeah. might be his best performance of all time. Oh, because I haven't, you know, I, I've never I seen it. You've never sorry, seen Nutty seen Professor? That, no, you know what? Actually, I have, but it was a long time ago. It's been a okay. long time. And I saw Nutty Professor before I saw Coming to America and Trading Places and Beverly Hills Cop. So it was like already something I loved. But the fact that he was playing like six roles and he's amazing yeah. in all of them. And he's so, and it's Chappelle's first movie too, playing yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the Def Jam comedian. I know that movie beat for beat. And it, I think Eddie Murphy was robbed of a Golden Globe because he, mm-hmm. he literally was playing like <laughs> seven different roles. Yeah. And it was great. And, Have you seen it lately? Was, no, I've never. Was that oh, pre or post Shrek? He... This is pre, pre Shrek, pre Shrek. So this is like what sets him up is I can do a family movie guy. Right. And I will say that, yes, it was like maybe, yeah, The Nutty Professor is like one of his, he did a couple movies after this that weren't exactly family friendly. Like he did like Pluto Nash and he did like yep. some something else that in the same realm. Eddie Eddie Murphy uh, doing uh, Nutty Professor and Nutty Professor 2 was kind of like his last like super R-rated type stuff. And then he was like, was that I'm a family R-rated? man. Yes, I guess yeah, the like, was already because he becomes like a sex maniac when he's Buddy Love, right? It maybe it might be PG thirteen. It might be PG thirteen, but it definitely was for adults. There's a, there's a lot of adult stuff happening in it that I learned. That yeah. which goes back to Layton's question. That was one of the movies I saw when I was young too. That taught me about some stuff I definitely didn't know. Like I remember, okay, so in the scene, this is Chappelle's like. It's not maybe his first movie, but it's like his biggest movie ever. It's like Eddie Murphy putting Chappelle in a movie. Chappelle yeah, yeah. plays this comedian named Reggie Warrington, who's kind of like an insult Def Jam style comic. And he comes uh-huh. out on stage and his whole thing is that he roasts everybody in the crowd. And uh-huh. uh, him and uh, Eddie Murphy as the Nutty Professor in his like big fat version of himself, he's saying all these crazy things about him. He's like, uh, your mama's bell size is equator. Uh, I I fucked your mama and then I rolled over. I was still on a bitch. Like all these things that <laughs> oh. I re- I learned as an eleven year old that I didn't fully even understand, but I memorized all of the roasts. It was yeah, like, yeah. uh, she got to put a belt on with a boomerang. You know, like there were all these bad jokes. <laughs> they were so funny, and I would say them to people at school. You know? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Amazing. What was stuff I'm sure they for crushed. Like- did I? Everybody, I'm trying to no think of stuff like that that I memorized, you know, from a movie and set at school because we all have that. 
yeah. stuff. Were you, were you a Steve Martin, the jerk guy? I know a lot of people memorize the jerk. Uh, not really. I liked Steve Martin. Actually, you know, it's funny. I wrote down before when we were talking about stuff I saw too early, and um, I loved All of Me. Have you seen that? It's him and Lily Tomlin. And Lily oh. Tomlin is, she, he, she like dies and possesses half of Steve Martin. Mm. And so it's this crazy this thing. It's like an incredible comedic performance, but I haven't seen it in years. I have no idea if it holds up. It's incredible comedic performance because he's in charge of like I forget, but like the left half of his body, and she's in oh charge of the right half. And so like now that you you're know, saying this, I think I've seen the front cover. Is there some sort of thing happening? Like one side smiling, one side's like it's been so long that I couldn't even tell you. Um, but I remember at one point uh, he's like his girlfriend wife whatever is mad at him and as an insult she goes well i faked all those orgasms and Ooh. he says i faked mine too uh which great okay. joke. uh great joke i remember pulling out the dictionary and looking up the word orgasm <laughs> like in our living room pulling out you know the fucking world book dictionary whatever it was you know whatever dictionary we had and looking up the word orgasm and being like what and really not you know and it gives them the, you know the, like, the climax of sexual experience or whatever um uh and being like okay okay like you know not understanding it okay i gotta tell you guys something so i knew very little about what an orgasm was I only knew of it from right. those two things that we had watched which that i had watched which was american pie and something about mary Okay. Uh, wow. So I knew that there was a substance that could come out, but I didn't know <laughs> when or how exactly it happened. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, and I had, this is around the beginning, not the beginning of the internet, but like, it was kind of like the internet was AOL. So I didn't really uh -huh. know that there uh -huh. was like a bar you could put in like www.com i would just have to like navigate to something through using whatever navigational buttons were already on the aol thing and i found a way to navigate to this body art website okay <laughs> and this this website would be i, I don't know if you guys know this is going body art but it's just people like it's like naked people who they're yeah, like up yeah. A thing yeah. is painted on them and yes. that was and my way like come some contortion a little bit yeah right? yeah, yeah i know exactly what you're but talking. like they're just fully naked. Their boobs are out. It was my way. Yep. And, and I'm at this age where I'm like, I know I want to look at this. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I know I just <laughs> like looking at it. And there was this picture of a woman who had like her entire back painted and she's like on her knees on a bed. So you're seeing her butt from this angle. And mm -hmm. I would just come and look at this picture. And then one day I started to feel something bubbling below. And I was like, I don't know what this is. I thought maybe I had to be, I run to the bathroom and it comes out into the toilet and I go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, I did it. Like I, I didn't touch it at all. It just did it the first time. And I did like wow. a Mario type of like, you know, when Mario would get a ring in like, sure. uh, what's that? It was, I was playing a game around that time. And I think I was, uh, this is Super, Super Mario story. Sun, Sunshine, Sunshine. You remember Sunshine? Uh -huh. Yeah, of course. He would, he, would, he would win the level and he'd be like, yeah, I did one of those. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. So you came into a toilet for the yeah, first time. standing up, and standing then... up without touching it. Just by looking at this body art woman on a bed. Incredible. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. what the body art on the woman was? Like, did that give it you was, a complex? It, it almost... <sighs> I don't know if it gave me a maybe because I'm definitely like a butt guy, so it's possibly that there this led go. to that. But I think it's like, is it a chicken and egg? Was I already a butt guy, and that's why that made me yeah. have that reaction I, to it? I think if you're a butt guy, you're born a butt guy, person. Exactly. I think that's exactly. just an innate character trait. Yeah. I think I was born that way, uh, and it, it gets better, you know. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it gets butter. <laughs> it gets butter. <laughs> uh oh. i think uh i think it was some sort of like like okay do you remember when there would be guys that would wear these shirts that were like very of it's like 
alternative, like Avenge Sevenfold type, like fucking <laughs> some type of like, it reminds me of the 2000s uh -huh. and guys wearing shirts where it's like one shirt, but there's like a short sleeve and then there's a connected longer sleeve. Oh yeah. You remember yeah, these yeah. kind of shirts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah and they would have yeah. some type of like design on it. It would look like that on her back. Like an, like an Ed Hardy type? Yes. Very Ed Hardy looking type of thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but awesome. I, I definitely do not do not seek that out. But if it was around, <laughs> I'd be like, okay, you know, take, yeah, take well, it uh, back. I mean, the, the obvious experiment now is to find that same picture. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Right. And then There's no and just way see what happens. <laughs> see if it does. Just be like, no hands, mom. No hands, baby. <laughs> yeah. I can go no hands. I, I wanted to say what my answer to this, what, what sparked this question from me yes, is please. that mm -hmm. I was on a, you know, in the quote unquote gifted and talented class, which there's no way that it's still called that, even though it was called that through my whole school tenure in middle mm -hmm. school. If you I can were in tell that you, class. I can tell you what it's called now at Audrey school. What's it called? It's the school of advanced studies. Whoa. That sounds like a mm -hmm. master's degree. I know. Right. How, well, how, also, how old yeah. is she? She's in fifth grade, so but okay, this is okay. like a, a program at LA schools, LA uh, LA USD, where it's like the advanced kids or whatever. Anyway, please continue. Right. Yeah, for a while mine was Sage, which was an acronym for something, and I don't remember what it was. Anyway, but the gifting class every year would get to go on a field trip to somewhere. So like one year it was to Atlanta to go see like CNN headquarters and go to the Coke Museum or whatever. And this and is from North year... Carolina for context. Anyway. Yeah, and yeah. so mm -hmm. this this particular year we were going to Washington DC. So we had one of the big buses. It wasn't necessarily a school bus. It was like yeah. a slightly nicer one was, that, that had was there the TVs. On, uh, January 6th, a few, few years back. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> So it had the little, you know, it had a DVD player and it had little screens. And so there were parent chaperones on the trip and there was only like a limited range of movies that could have gotten approved to show. And we got to pick between Finding Nemo on DVD or Fireproof on DVD. Have either of you heard or, of or seen Fireproof? No. Okay. I think Don't of Google it. Wait, am I thinking of Backdraft? That's you're, thinking, the... you're thinking of Backdraft. Okay. But there, so two movies Fire obviously Bro. were like 12. And so no, nobody wants to watch Finding Nemo. And it was one of the moms being like, well, you know what? We're going to watch Fireproof. Fireproof is a pure flicks type movie about a firefighter with a pornography addiction. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> who's ruining his marriage with his pornography addiction and then like his Wait, how old are you at this point <laughs> like 12 <laughs> why that, and this, is, he, is it like magazines rules. or what is he addicted to no 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 no. it's amazing because they show him on his like big chunky desktop in the middle of this. the night in like his white tank top like looking over his shoulder and he's looking at pictures of boats online and then there are pop-up ads of women like do you want to see more and he's like oh sitting there sweating over this like woman in a bikini on a pop-up on a boat website and like this is the full extent it never shows him looking at hardcore porn it doesn't show him jerking off it's just him being tempted by like yacht website sidebar ads and it becomes a whole thing with his That's... wife like his wife is going to leave him because he won't stop giving into the temptation and fireproof the logo of the movie the two o's are wedding rings interconnected but there's a scene in the movie where he gets fed up with his porn addiction and he like takes his desktop and takes it outside and like beats it with a bat <laughs> anyway that is so beats it off funny. with a bat wait do you it's remember like this... when you were watching it what was your conception of what he was addicted to like did you know what porn was and you were like oh like, oh totally yeah like... yeah okay. but it was like wait a second, this really prudish Christian mom chose a Christian movie, but the Christian movie is about jerking off. That's amazing. Because was, that the message, that was the message at the end that he got rid of it and then his wife was happy and their marriage was good? And yeah, because he found God. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Um, 
I so, so yeah, yeah, I love Fireproof. It will live in my brain forever. But just the fact that it was, I think there was some other movie that was on the list that was like a normal, appropriate kids movie that this particular mom had vetoed for being inappropriate. So it's like, it's we can have a awesome. movie about porn and jerking off as long as that it's about how God will okay. save you. I was going to say uh, that movie and the 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 plot of it reminds me, I wonder if it, either of you have seen this movie. It's called Don Juan. It's Joseph Gordon-Levitt's directorial oh, debut yeah. that Never he also thought. stars in. So it's a it's a I... movie. It was like his passion project about being addicted to porn. And it's this guy who's like, man, no. sometimes porn's even better than the real thing. I like it because <laughs> in the porn, you can make them do what you want and type shit. <laughs> and he's like, he's got this accent. And it. I kind of was baffled by it because... It's not like the worst movie ever, but it's also just like, this is what he was like, nah, this will be my my first thing. You know, and maybe he was trying to shake what people thought of him. I don't know. But it just like does go so against his like vibe of like, I'm the hit record guy. Let's have a, you know, yeah, yeah. a network of, you know. <laughs> Well, I'm paid street. uncredited laborer. You know what? Yeah, this, yeah. Actually, this is the move for Keenan is to do yeah. this kind of movie about a guy. So, okay, it's about a guy who's addicted to AI porn Ooh, because he can make different. it do whatever he wants. Whatever he so wants. it's kind of a, maybe it's a satire on mm -hmm. AI and the future of AI. And, you know, at the end, he meets a real life person and they kind of hit it off or something like that. Yeah. Right? It's like this more, but it's it, it's very serious. And he burns just his laptop just her? like... <laughs> yeah, well, no, and he burns his laptop. Yeah, he burns his laptop just like in what's the movie called? Crossfire. Fireproof. Fireproof. Is that Starring a double Kirk meaning Cameron. in some way? Yeah, because oh, the Kirk. the bonds of marriage so are hot. fireproof, and he's a firefighter. Uh, yeah. You can't burn down this marriage. He takes his uh, VR goggles, his VR set outside. Should we should right? we do should we do uh, real fast our wrecks or things we like or whatever? Like when there when there's some things, yeah. You know what? Real quick, uh, we got three minutes. We're gonna do the fastest. What's popping ever? That's the name of the segment. It's called What's Popping. Okay. Yes. What? What if we do it rapid round lemon peach popping in quick succession? We each go and we go through all of them. All right, fast though, fast. Yeah. Okay, so we get yeah. one pop culture, one complaint, one good thing. This is the only time we've ever done this, and I'm very excited for it. What's popping? All right, go. Um, I'll go first. For the pop culture, I'm going to say what I said earlier. Alien Romulus, I think go see it. See it on the biggest screen possible. See it in IMAX or 4DX. I'm about to go see it in 4DX again because I just want to feel oh, shit. Nice. everything moving. I want And, and I want to get – I think it might do some puffs at your face. I just want to see if the oh, technology yeah. has improved <laughs> since Tons the last time. I was flying out of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> they used to have smells in 4DX. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I think they decided it, yeah. against – they just they were like, what really is aliens gonna smell? That's not probably not gonna be a great smell. So I think they got rid of mm -hmm. it. But um, so that is good. Thing I'm annoyed by is uh mm, this is the complaint I've heard too many people say. Okay, here's one that's that's strictly a me complaint. I think airports and all of it is terrible. Everyone feels that way, but I have a solution for it. I think, and this is another business plan, just like my Kanan Thompson movie, I think uh I want to invent a business called teleport where you take a sedative in your own bed with your bags packed and then you wake up oh, this in your location. Is, that's a okay? great idea. And yeah. I think like, and, and some people come and they transport your unconscious body to wherever this. the desk, they put you on a plane on a stretcher or something. And then they put your body into the hotel in Hawaii. And then you wake up with your bags and you're like, Oh, I don't even remember traveling. Like no, I dude, think wow. that. Yes. This is a horror movie. No, that's yes. Stephen King's The Jaunt. The, the Jaunt. Ending. It's similar, yeah. What is The Jaunt? I don't know it. Oh, you should read it. It's like, it's Stephen King's short story that is about that exact thing, but scary. Okay, I am looking it up, and no one has made that as a movie, have they? I think someone optioned it, or for a TV series, or something. I remember reading it when we talked it about it. It wouldn't work as a movie. We're, oh, we're being really bad at efficiency. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, like okay. okay. Different... Lemon. Okay, and then I got to say a thing that's good. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that 
something good right now, which I am thinking of in the moment, which is why I'm stalling, is... <laughs> uh, Okay, I'm just going to say this, and it's, I don't care if it makes you sound yeah, bougie. I got, I got an assistant recently, and why it's changed my life is because I admitted what my weaknesses were that I needed help with instead of trying to be like, well, my brain just should be able to do things like other people. I was like, I can't really do this. And right. I was like, you know what? It is worth me giving up this money so that I can just be efficient and not have to do the things my 100%. brain can't do. 100%. And that is more the thing that's good. It is realizing Love whatever that. you can't do and then getting help for it and then being like i'm just not gonna try to do it's, that we we through nsp have had an assistant for a while now and it is like such a game changer like it, it and it is exactly the hey i have someone to outsource the shit i'm bad at too yes yes mm -hmm. i think it's a great move hell yeah, yeah. what's popping for me i don't know why did i go back and rewatch my cousin Vinny? i don't know but it's fucking great. It's a very funny movie, 1992. It's, you know, it's a classic for a reason. I've, I've heard I, the accents, but I've never was seen it. It is like such a well done. I mean, it's tight. It's funny. Great acting. Famously, Marissa Tomei won an Oscar for it. Uh, like it's, Also, apparently, like very close fidelity in terms of actual lawyering stuff oh like interesting it's taught wow. in law schools yeah it's wow. just like and it's got a very satisfying ending it's got an amazing performance uh by fred gwynn herman munster as the judge who's this like you know he's probably in his 60s 70s at this point old guy mm -hmm. uh awesome like a bunch of okay. great character actors in it um and Joe Pesci, Ralph Macchio, you know, transitioning out of karate kiddom into the next phase Ooh. of his career. Like, yeah, it's really, really good. Uh, so that's my what's popping. It's worth seeing if you haven't seen it. It's a it's a one of the it's a really good, like, you know, feature comedy. Um, on my list. Uh, lemon. I wrote it down. Where the fuck is it? Here it is. Oh, yeah. The real short. I I can't. I got this Mac calendar. And it's like kind of synced with my Google and it's kind of synced with my phone and certain things show up and certain things don't. I don't know what the fuck is going on with it, but it's it's just annoying to deal with. And I just want one thing that just syncs evenly across everything. So dealing with the, the fucking calendar, I, I'm sure it's just on my end, but it's, it's bothering me. Um, and for a peach, uh, I just spent a week in Toronto recording a smooth jazz holiday album for this, Whoa. uh, smooth. Yeah. I've been doing this like smooth jazz thing for a little bit now, uh, it's kind cool. of a bit, but kind of not like take the music seriously, but make shitty decisions in terms of how it sounds. Uh, <laughs> Is it as Brian? No, it's as, uh, Trey Magnifique here. I'll show you real quick, even though I know, burp, burp, burp. here. Okay, is this showing up? That that's me. Ooh, wow! Yeah. You look good. Thank you. <laughs> show show uh, a little taco meat. Okay. Hell yeah. Okay, Brian. <laughs> uh, so I played the sax for years. I wanted something else fun to do with it, and I thought says like smooth jazz is so open for kind of doing a bit. Also, I realized all my favorite music fell squarely into the genre of. I think this is bad. So I <laughs> wanted to write music that was ambiguously good like so i love it i can't wait doing. to hear I that when's it drop really so the full length is out the holiday one will come out in hopefully early november i gotta say don't love the idea of putting an album out around the election but on the other hand it's a holiday album so what the fuck are you gonna do yeah. might be exactly so. what people need yes it might yeah. you know what i have thought about that it might be what people need so you also could Wait till December if you're like, I want to be fully holiday, you know. I, I could, but, yeah. It's I, it's more just like, do I want to be the guy promoting an album if Trump gets reelected? Not really. Like, yeah, I hear that. That's kind of that. like, there's more important shit to be worried about. I don't know. So, I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. Anyway. but I think if that's the case, the album will be the least of our worries. I yeah. tend to agree with that. Yeah. But, all right. Layton. Hit us. All right, let's go. Lemon. I read two terrible books this week and they made me really mad. Both of those books, one was called Scan Lines and the other one was called Only Ever or Yours. The first one was a terrible ghost story 
based on uh, the Bud Dwyer tape, and it was just completely wasted, that generally really good premise. And the second one was dumbass YA shit. So fuck both those books. I hate you. Peach, uh, there are some, it's very, it's going to be like 106 today, but there have been flashes where it's slightly cooler out that's giving me hope and life. So <laughs> clinging to that shit. <laughs> And what's popping for me is that there are a multitude of prison documentaries hosted by uh, Sir Trevor McDonald that are excellent documentaries on YouTube. So mm. if you look up prison, Trevor McDonald, he treats everybody with such respect and curiosity and talks to a lot of fascinating people in prison. So mwah, those are my three. Great. Efficiency. Yes. Uh, what was the, what was the you. second one? It was that it's cleaner this? outside. Oh, that it's slightly, there are moments where it's colder outside. Like there colder. are some evenings okay. where it's like, oh, I need a jacket, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Right now I'm, I'm covered in sweat and my dog is on my lap. So I'm covered in sweat and dog hair stuck to the sweat. So that one's important to me right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you for being on our show. It's so yeah. nice to meet you. Please, please come back sometime so we can monopolize your time further. Yeah. Well, I feel like we, we all we all found such a fun uh, groove about things to talk about. We didn't get to talk about like the stuff you're doing. You know, you have this amazing career as a writer. And yeah, a comic I had like interview everything. questions and shit. Like we didn't get so, to talk about hey, any of that stuff. We'll so, do it on uh, the next. We'll do it on the live one. Hell yeah. Yeah, Hell yeah. It was, <laughs> you know, it's been like we're talking about. It's been like five years since we've seen each other, so it's just great to have a chance to catch yeah. up. Yeah, thank again. you so much for having but me. So fun to, you know, reconnect and then also meet you late and after hearing so much about you. If people want to check out your stuff, where can they find you? Oh, where do you want to point them? Uh, Binium Biz on everything. B i n i a m b i z. Uh, you know, same on uh, uh, if you if you request me on DoorDash. Uh, maybe able to <laughs> might, might see me delivering. You never nice. know. Might be doing some research. Hell yeah! Uh, cool. All right. Uh, thank you guys. I'm gonna hop off and yeah, uh, right. let me know whenever it comes out. I'll post whatever. Yeah. You know. It, it, awesome. Amazing. Thank you so much. So great to see you, bud. Thank you for your thank time. You. And right. uh, we'll see each other soon. Bye bye. Bye. Guys. bye. And goodbye. Goodbye, audience. Also. Wait. Hold on. There we are. Goodbye, audience. It's also, wait, what, 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 what? I have what? I have a long spiel to get into now. No, I'm I'm just kidding. I would never ever want to waste a moment of your time, Layton. I have therapy that I. Well, need I don't know. In. Maybe maybe get better, and then we don't have to deal with it. <laughs> All right, bye everybody. <laughs> Goodbye. Layton Night is produced by Brian Wecht and Layton Gray. Sign up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash Night. Follow us on Twitter at at Layton Night, on Instagram at at Layton underscore Night, or email us at LaytonKnight at gmail.com.